It, it is absolutely astonishing. We've got such a fantastic turnout today. Um, 12 months ago, we were standing in a very small gazebo, uh, windswept and about half a dozen people and, and about the same number of cars. And in 12 months' time, we've gone to a grid of over 20 cars and uh, people coming to join us every day. Quite fantastic. Hello, I'm Duncan Vincent and welcome to the Smart for Two Championship here at Donington Park. Looking forward to having some cracking smart car racing. Uh, tricky weather conditions as we can see, but we're going for a rolling start. We're supporting the Brick Car Championship this season. And here we go, the cars making their way from the Fogarty S's down towards the starting lights. And we're going racing here at Donington as the cars come down towards Redgate Corner in the plumes of spray, lights ablaze and wipers flashing on these little smart cars as in towards first corner the old people kind of tippy toeing around there and there's David Moore who's got the lead, David Moore in the kind of bright orangey red car you could say makes his way from Reggae down through Hollywood corner and on towards the very daunting kind of curves now it's daunting in a big car, it must be absolutely terrifying in a smart car with a pack of these pursuing you down through the cleaner curves at racing speed looking to try and find a grip as they come in towards the old hairpin, it looks like it's Sarah Moore that's up into second place in the white car with the red and white stripes across the bonnet and that could well be Jake Jackson in a third position they will get a vision on that as he comes under Starkey's Bridge through the Swanch curves up towards McLean's but these little cars pretty tiptoey stuff as they make their way round this treacherously slippery Donington Park circuit up towards McLean's corner they come and it is in third place in third place is actually number nine it's Jake Jackson and Tom Knight right behind him by the looks of things uh, or was that David Nash very difficult to see the numbers of the cars from here as they come up towards Coppice Corner this is a tricky corner here it's David Moore all the way so far early on in this race and there's Sarah Moore in the Space Wise car and just trying to get the back end to get some grip rear wheel drive these cars as we see whoa, and the third place car is a lovely lovely rear end slide as it comes onto the Dunlop straight and uh, the Dunlop straight will seem pretty long in a smart car one would presume and they lost a little bit of traction there did that car having a big sideways moment off the end of the coppice there and that light number 7 get past them Davis Nash did get past on the straight there but looking back up the inside was number 9 Tom uh, Jake Jackson but it wasn't to be slippery through the fucking S's and onto the next lap they come up towards Redgate Corner uh, luckily for David Moore he's got the, the good thing of having a clear windscreen not having to have his wipers on you because everybody else with the wipers ablaze as up the inside goes number 4 5, 6 that's Mackie and Rasmussen in the white car and they're three abreast through Redgate as they head towards Hollywood and this is going to be a little bit closer to come towards Cooter Curve somebody's going to have to give and on the inside somebody sneaks through but off at the bottom of Redgate the bottom funnel here and so that's David Nash David Nash on the grass in the black number 7 car and that looks like well it doesn't look like he's going to be stuck so hopefully David Nash will get going from there Obviously just been a little bit too keen going through the old hairpin. Gonna have to watch these cars as well, them being such a short wheelbase, it's gonna be rather tricky. You could imagine trying to get the power down, it's gonna feel like a bit of a big go-kart as number 12 gets the power on too early. Far too early for Tom Knight, and round he goes out of what was a crack in fourth position for Tom Knight. So again, just seeing the problems these guys are having, lighting up the rear ends, as someday in the distance in the gravel trap as well, and that's a rather strange place to, to drop your smart car, just after Starkey's bitch. Number three car goes past us at Tim Summers and the lovely American flag car there so all shapes and sizes and all colours as well in these cars and you can just hear them trying to get the traction they're great traction for the orange car as they blast past 451 which looked like the Costa but I'm thinking that was actually Charles Gonu and we'll get a visual on them as they come down towards the Redgate first corner just in front of them we've got number 12 Tom Knight after his uh, disastrous moment there at the bottom of the old hairpin so these guys doing a cracking, cracking bit of driving in tricky conditions here at this uh, wet Donington 
Not the easiest conditions in a smart car. Remember, very short wheelbase, as you can see, and rear-wheel drive. So you've got to try and stay away from all these exit curves. You've got to try and find the grip. And Donington can and has had a bit of a notoriously slippery tag given to it for a few years. Ago. But up the inside there, and again on the power far too early. Going through Coppa's far too early in the 452 car there. That's just getting on the gas. He's been a little bit too keen. That's Charles going to. Knew he was definitely going to feature in our programme there. Just getting on the power that little bit too heavy. Spinning up those rear wheels and round he goes. The marshals pull in the yellow flags and it's all clear again at the exit of Coppice. And very important Coppice. Gives you a good run onto that back. Dunlop straight and there's an overtaking opportunity at the bottom at the Fogarty S's. As we see the number 11 car trying to get past that's Martin Clatworthy. And uh, he just gets kind of shown the edge of the track and absolutely no mercy. And oh, somebody else has dropped it at McLean's corner. That's the 314 car. The Silver Smart Cup car 314. And uh, well, Cedric Albers gets himself out the gravel and thankfully away from harm's way because that's not a place where you want to find yourself sitting at the edge of the track at Donington Park here and out have come the safety car boards so we have a safety car we will regroup the pack up and uh, well poor David Moore that's going to evaporate his lead let's Sarah Moore catch right up and everybody else so the safety car has pulled in now lights are off the safety car so we're going racing again here Donton a very very quick safety car period there and uh, half the guys haven't even caught the safety car up as you can see way in the distance there's still people coming down the back straight but Moore anyway leads from Moore actually and it's going to be very tight as they're coming towards Reggae David Moore has already got his head down on the handsome lead Sarah Moore has got Rasmussen on one side and then Colour inside it looks like Tom Knight as well it's going to be extremely crucial we've got DaCosta in the middle of that as well number three wide through Reggae corner as we head towards Hollywood and the orange car DaCosta just gets up alongside the camera gives us a funny view of that and if anything it's Rasmussen that's going right around the outside down through Hollywood in towards the top of the crane of curves it's a, a brave corner through here you're very very quick in any car no matter what it is you're absolutely on the on the button going through there we can see some of the marks in the grass where some people have got it wrong in the past but tippy toeing through the old hairpin we pick up get a good visual on the number 12 car of Tom Knight there the G&M sponsored car maybe a little bit too cautious through there a little bit too cautious seem to lose a little bit of speed as they go under Starkey's bridge up towards the Swanch curve we pick further up back down the field just now another battle coming in towards Redgate corner the number 2 car of Paul B Bates right in the middle of that, number two but Paul Bates, number 11 also in the middle of that, he's featured already, that's Martin Clatworthy and the car's making their way now down past the big advertising boards here at Hollywood Corner down towards Kuna Curves in the battle of four here this is where you've got to have your wits about you, we've said this so many times that we can't stress it and look at that, looking for the outside line down through the Kuna Curves maybe just a little bit more grip there and a good bit of racecraft there by Clatworthy and he'll be happy with that and up the inside also goes Paul Bates Paul Bates and oh there's obviously a bit of an issue with the green car oh and off drops it at the bottom of all the airpin after a cracking manoeuvre around the top of Kuna Curves Clatworthy drops the number 11 car and that would have had everybody's heart rate going through with the roof move that's where the green car decided of it, Gregory Van Damme just decided to uh, uh, kind of exit stage left as they got to the old hairpin back at the sharp end though looking for more traction as they come on to the back straight and uh, yeah Tom Knight just getting done over there done over big time by the 451 car of David De Costa and uh, that was just a kind of bad traction again is that Charles going to go? is that Charles going to go again? it looks like it could be her friend doing a three point turn in a smart car at Coppice one would imagine you could have just maybe burrowed that about and got away but away he goes obviously having some issues with traction in his little smart car but let's pick the guys back up at Redgate again the man who's been action all day long Tom Knight dives up the inside in the number 12 car and he's now battling with Jake Jackson Jake Jackson in that number 9 car the two black cars together you hear them accelerating hard away from Redgate through Hollywood and heading down towards the top of Crane of Curves but we go back and we pick up with our friend Charles Gano as he comes through, is he going to do something uh, Something fairly exciting for us? No, he runs onto the exit curb, he's a brave man, he's flirting with a, a little bit of disaster there as he uses a painted surface at the exit of Redgate corner and down through Hollywood and anyway, away he goes bottom of the old hairpin, no, no, no into the gravel trap was number 9 and that was close that was close for Jake Jackson, that looked like that could have dug in and gone over smart cars, extremely extremely kind of pocket rocket sized things and they don't like gravel traps very much, that's for sure so Jake Jackson, Jake Jackson gets away with uh, one of his nine lives in tax here as we pick back up with our man at the front it's David Moore in the number one class A car as he comes through finding loads and loads of grip in that car and he has just shown that he is a man on a mission in second place we have got Sarah Moore in the white car the white number six car 
and we'll hopefully get a visual on her. But out of the Fogarty ASCs, flashing the lights, it's up towards the checkered flag, and it is a win for David Moore. He's going to be very happy with that. In second place, we're going to have Sarah Moore. And as we look back towards third place for these guys coming out and crossing the line, it's going to be a very, very tight battle. It looks like it's Rasmussen that comes home in third position. For the back down the field, Charles Gonneau still lodged firmly in a battle into the old airplane and he robs it once more. He manages to get the thing under control, albeit facing the wrong way. And it's just position after position after position going at the window for Charles there. Not the best day at the office for him at the right time, but he gets away with that one and it lives to tell the tale another day. More action of these guys coming through Coppice, heading towards a checker flag. Looks like somebody's bailed out early, they're retiring back to the pits with a bit of a problem. But down towards the Fogarty S's, they will be coming. Tricky weather conditions have weathered it well, but nobody's weathered it as good as David Moore, who was unstoppable in these weather conditions. The number one car already at the old hairpin, celebrating his well-deserved win. The brick car back, smart car. He'll be a chuff chap when he gets back to the pit lane. So David Moore wins from Sarah Moore. Mackie and Rasmussen is third. Silvio Carrera is fourth with Tom Knight in fifth position. The rest of the guys coming home and even our friend there, all the way down in 14th place, Charles Gano. It was good. It, it's my first time at Donington Park. It's a really nice track and unfortunately we had the qualifying in the dry weather and the race in the weather so it was a bit tricky to begin with but all in all it was a really good race. I didn't have a very good start. I was um, I was ha had well full power on before the start and I was waiting for the lights to go and uh, I backed off because I thought I was going to cross the line before they went out um, and then the lights went out when I backed off so uh, it wasn't a very good start but managed to keep second so it was a good race. I got quite a good start, I managed to pull away a bit at the start and from there I slowly started to pull a bit and uh, obviously the safety car came out and we all bunched back up again but after that again I managed to get a bit of a lead and just slowly pull away and just keep it cool and just keep going really. Welcome to another episode of Racing No Filter. Joining me in sunny California, Bill Wood, and down in sunny Florida, Peter Keen. We're going to take a look at some of the products HPD has created for the 2012 Honda Civic. And specifically, we're going to show you an install and adjustable sway bar. Until then, folks out there, you take care. Want to keep up with all the racing action at the track? Well, download the new Go Racing TV iPhone and Android app. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I was never going to be on the podium or anything like that, so the idea was just to bring it home safely and save it for the next race and just enjoy myself. So as we can see, the grid in front of us with David Moore and Jake Jackson, Sarah Moore and Tom Knight. Rasmussen and De Costa are the fourth, third row for the grid. Sorry, with Horriman and Nash, row four. Sumners is on row five. And alongside Tim Sumners, we're going to have James Palmer. Let's see how the smart cars get on this time, guys. Very tricky conditions before. It was full weight. And this time, we have got Apache track as the race is underway. Once again, it's David Moore heading down towards first corner. The unflappable David Moore, who managed to just dominate race one. Absolutely dominated. It disappeared in the distance in these very tricky conditions this morning. But now we've got dry track. We've got sunshine at Donington. So let's see who can do what here. Already a problem with one of the cars here. That looks like it could be car number two. That could be Paul Bates. Now, we saw Paul in the first race doing pretty well in the rain, actually. But it looks like there's something already wrong with that car. Whether that's a water leak or a little bit of contact off the start. But these guys absolutely flying the cars down through the old hip. And a lot more grip now. So let's hope uh, Charles Gonneau, if we catch up with him in the 452 car soon, doesn't have any problems as he did in the first one. He certainly was action all around for us. 
a cracking look back here as we go over the start finish line back at the car in second place which is Jake Jackson and this is David Moore over on board with Jackson goes up inside the brakes it's a very late look Moore cuts across the inside Donington Park must feel so wide in a smart car but they're using all the road and a little bit of the grass keep which you can see just past the edge of the exit curve there and Jackson that was a very very good move by Jackson he was having a shot there but Moore very defensive that's why he's got the number one plate on very defensive and very quick Sarah Moore in third position in the white car with the red and blue stripes over the bonnet and you can see the way the top guys are really throwing these things in and that's the touring car line if I've ever seen one where's the track man there you're on it now he gets back on the track and uh, I think the stewards might be having a little bit of a look at that obviously been watching the British touring cars from a couple of weeks ago as they make their way up towards McLean's corner turn it in there and Jackson is not letting Moore get away with this one and come to think of it neither is Sarah Moore these three pulling away pulling away quite handsomely from Tom Knight who's in fourth position just now up towards Coppice on board Moore catches up with Jackson on the brakes and Sarah Moore looks very very quick as she come through that corner there's a two abreast further down the field that looks like Rasmussen in some sort of battle there as they're going down towards uh, uh, the Fogarty S's with uh, Clapworthy and let's see who comes out on top on this one up the inside of the brakes, just very tight as they go in there, it's actually the number 4 car number 4 car doing a, a cracker over, take a manoeuvre that's James Palmer, as they go through the newly reprofiled Fogarty S's which gives you a better launch on towards the Wheatcroft Strait as they head down past the new pits at Donington Park Circuit, but back at the front it is still Moore from Jackson from Sarah Moore and these three are now away at the front you can see them really loading up the front of the cars as they get in towards the McLean's there and really trying to get these little cars to stick to the ground going a little bit defensive up towards McLean's a little bit early for maybe the defensive line or is that somebody in a little bit of trouble there the 202 car of Rob Baker following there and maybe just getting held up a little bit by the car in front is there a problem with that one? we shall find out but these guys all keep it on the track you can see they're just that little bit more timid maybe the conditions still a little bit iffy uh, as the cars come through coppice and head on towards the back straight meanwhile the laps are ticking off and the weather conditions if anything seem to be improving there's number 11 clapworthy goes up the inside on the wheatcroft straight and does a nice clean pass and that looked like it was just on pure power no drafting no slipstream just got a really good run through the corner and got past the number three car of tim summers Number three car, Tim Summers, the 314 car, which you saw in the gravel trap earlier on as well. That's Cedric Albers. And Cedric has uh, thankfully not ditched it on McLean this time. Number 11 again, Clatworthy with a novice cross in the back there, the yellow and black cross. It's good to see that. A couple of novices out there racing together in their first year of motorsport. And they've decided to come to the Smart for You Cup as we come through Coppice and there's getting a good drive here from Summers. This is some cracking on board shot, the little smart car getting a big draft off the other one. Big draft of a little car, he ducks back in for a second bite of the slipstream. Now can he do it as he coming towards the fog at the S's? Maybe just that initial come out of the slipstream just lost him a little bit of momentum. That's through the top of McLean's goes the 452 car. Uh, that is the Rasmussen car actually. And a little bit further down the field than we would actually expect Rasmussen to be after the first race. That'd be 456. Look at that, that's commitment from Moore. Absolutely steams past mid the curves here, gets past the, the back marker as they go in towards the old hairpin and back at Redgate Corner, well it's all action once again battles happening all the way down the field here in the smart cars and as we heard earlier on we're up to 20 cars in this we have gone from round about 12 cars last year, we've almost doubled the grid and a little bit more actually because there's a, a few not here but up to 20 cars and you can see these guys having loads of fun the guys and girls are here a cracking job as Bates leaves the pit lane so it was Bates that we saw earlier on he obviously has got something fixed in that front left there the smart for you cup car back down towards the Fogger S is more action in the field more action in the pack it looks like it was an overtaking move it was just a little faint out just to say hello I'm here and if you're not careful I'm coming through that was Cedric Albers there back up at McLean's 456 right on the money as we come through there and that's Mackie and Rasmussen up towards Coppice and it's all about getting some sort of good drive through here the 451 car off the Costa and can Rasmussen get that little car, that little car in the slipstream there <laughs> little smart car a little bit tongue tied can he get in the slipstream and get a good toe down the Dunlop straight and towards the fog of the S's because these things will draft very well the shape of them just looks like it's going to be good for drafting However, we cut back to see Moore scything his way through traffic. David Moore is absolutely streets ahead of everybody in this championship. Passes two cars on the way in towards McLean's corner. As they head up towards Coppice, it's still Da Costa and Rasmussen. 
Rasmussen really needs to get this done. He needs to get this done and dusted. They're already on their way onto the weak cross straight, and he's having a look as they come in towards Redgate. Can he hold the inside line? Can he break late enough? De Costa does back off. He gives him that space. So through goes the four, five, six car of Rasmussen, and he's just gone past the green car of De Costa. Bates is still a little bit of smoke coming with that car, there's a little bit of something coming in from the front left, not too sure, he looks a little bit off the pace, that's for sure, and after his epic race one, oh dear, oh dear, it could only be Cedric Albers, <laughs> in the 314 car, at the bottom of the old hairpin, as through comes Rasmussen and De Costa and Albers is on the grass here, stranded, that's not so much the touring car line, that's just where they land if they've done something wrong. Now is this Summers again? Summers under all sorts of pressure in the number three Stars and Stripes car and he's done by James Palmer. These guys having a race long battle. Palmer turns in quite early. Is he going to run out of road in the exit? Is he going to run out of road in the exit? No, we just cut away the wrong minute for the camera there and we picked David Moore back up at Coppice Corner. In the number one car, would have been good to stay on board with Summers here and see if, uh, if he had run out of road at first corner, but Palmer, no, still ahead as they both get past Albers in towards Fogger S's. Oh, and Palmer's overshot, Palmer overshoots the S's. He has to go through the gravel trap, avoid the sausage kerbs and the newly reprofiled Fogger S's, and that's an absolute disaster for him. After getting the place, going in towards Redgate, he then overshoots it at the Fogger S's, and nothing worse than that. Has to do it all again, and here comes David Moore. Though. David Moore now coming up to lap these guys. Look at the speed of Moore. He's been watching the guys from the BTCC as he goes absolutely thundering along the grass under Starsky's bitch and through sports curves. We pan back to pick up Jake Jackson in second position, who would hopefully be a little bit more, um, a little kinder to the, the environment as he comes through there. And he does that. He tries to get past Paul Bates, Paul Bates by staying on the track. But ticking off the laps again. Number 12 car coming through as well, Tom Knight, the G&M car. And there's Rasmussen having a dive up the inside there. I think I was just uh, getting past the back marker. And likewise, there goes David Moore. And he's got that thing dancing about, doing a little dance, isn't he? It's from wheel to wheel, it looks really good. Nice and light. Got the car going very well and he's been the class of the field here at Donington today. As he comes out and chocks off another checker flag for David Moore. He's flashing the lights, he's a happy chappy. And it's two out of two for David Moore. In second place we're going to see Jake Jackson. And right on third place, Sarah Moore also. She'll come over in the white car with the stripes over the bonnet just in the distance. Just crossing the line just now. So Moore, Jackson and Sarah Moore are your top three. The next car would be Tom Knight who comes home in 4th and Mackin Rasmussen comes home in 5th place after a fine battle with 451 David De Costa. But this is the man, this is the man of the moment and long well, you may celebrate with your arm at the window. Class act, David Moore from Jake Jackson, from Sarah Moore, from Tom Knight. Mackie and Rasmussen with David De Costa and the rest of the guys all coming through and our, our friend Cedric Albers finishing 17th Yeah, no, really good fun um, having a little bit of a tear up a few of the boys at the beginning um, couldn't catch the really fast ones so I slowed down a little bit to catch up with Paul and uh, people like that and we had a good little tear up between ourselves basically so there was no point driving around on my own so I slowed down a little bit and had, had some fun with some other guys <laughs> oh, So you enjoyed yourself then? Yeah, I started off, I don't know, 6, 7 on the grid and uh, starting the warm up lap as we come up for the rolling start. I looked in the mirror and see a lot of smoke, but I don't worry about it. As I turned into Redgate, I had no grip at all, just completely sideways. And then I was looking in the mirror again and coming in the pit, started out a puncher. Boys had checked and said I hadn't, I'd lost all the water in the car. So I dropped all the antifreeze, which is why I ended up sideways behind me as well. So, so they sorted that out and got me back out. So I wasn't really in the race, but had some really good fun out there. And I because I'd come back out and caught up with the guys that was already coming back round again. Yeah, so is it, is it more about taking part and enjoying yourself rather than the actual winning? I think you've got, um, there's two takes on it. You've got the guys up the front um, that obviously take it very, very serious. Um, for us guys, well, one, we're the series owners, so it's a little bit different. Um, but there's a lot of guys out there that are coming out and there's a lot of people here that just want to have a fun weekend, a bit of motorsport. They're not going to be up the front. But it doesn't matter because they're still having battles with their mates and their other people and other colleagues all the way down the field. So that's what it's about, it's taking part and having good racing. Not just going out and racing around aimlessly on your own, but you might as well go and do a track day. So that's that's the aim and it seems to be working. Hi right, Jake, well uh, you finished where you started, uh, how was it? It was a very, very good race, uh, close at the start between me and David. Yeah, I thought you were going to uh, piff him at one point. Uh, I thought I might, but... I didn't really want to carry on uh, with the manoeuvre because I thought it might go into him. 
David, um, another win, you're making it look easy. Um, I wish it was, but um, no, it's still quite hard out there. I mean, we've got Sarah and Jake that were battling towards the, the start of the race. It chopped off a bit towards the end, but we were all just as quick as each other, so at any point they could have been behind me and it could have been a good race. It's, uh, so what is it about the smart car that suits your style of driving? Um, it's just sort of how, how I grew up, sort of. Not quite like a rally car, but you've got to you've got to boss the car around a bit, but you've also got to be smooth with it.